What's up, YouTube? I'm Robert. And you're watching the Biker Bar Podcast. The whole our whole low density layer thing, where we want to put softer shit right next to your head. Yeah, I I want it in every helmet, not just you know everything over a hundred dollars. Yeah. yeah, and let's let's talk about that. But I think first we need to get people up to speed on on what that is. So those of you that are listening that are familiar with MIPS. That's a system that allows the helmet to rotate sort of like your brain shakes around inside of your skull and the, in the fluid in there. And it, it is supposed to keep, you know, it's supposed to help with the side impacts instead of just like the, the drop the cadaver yeah, on his boom. head. It's, right. It's oblique, you know, so when you're, when you, and, and none of us rarely hit bam, right. Right. We it's usually the, don't land upside down. Boom. Right? Yeah. You know, it's, a, it's a whole rotational thing. So yeah, so, that's what MIPS was is designed is designed to do and does work. So one day you decide I want to do something different. So how how did that come about? Why didn't you just go get like pay the patent and throw MIPS in your stuff? Um partially because I think that um again back to helmets are too hard. With mm -hmm. MIPS, you put a, a a plastic layer between your skull and the foam that's supposed to crush. Mm -hmm. So you're slightly protecting the foam from crushing. Oh, I see what you're saying. So, and and I've tested MIPS, and I'm gonna tell everybody that bought a MIPS helmet that what they tell you it does does work. It right. does slow down rotational forces, and that's important. So I'm not here to bash on MIPS and say they're they're full of shit. They're not. They they right. accomplished something very important and taught us about it. Um, yeah, I mean, I remember when the first time we talked about this, you were like, Hey man, I'm, I'm stoked that they did that because they, yeah. they made people start paying attention to it. Yep. But as I started researching more and got into this whole thing of helmets are too hard and how do we make softer stuff? Um, I actually met, uh, Dr. Plant, Dr. Dan Plant from the Imperial College of London, who was working on the 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 gel pieces that we now use mm -hmm. um his background originally was from the uk military they they gave them money to study when a humvee runs over a bomb in iraq iran afghanistan wherever yeah yeah that the the humvee survives but everybody inside yeah, gets, gets killed because they yeah, yeah it's, or, or majorly injured right. so how do you reduce those forces and and then it went from there and then it it went to boxing studies where uh, he told me this one story where i was on the fence about mips i'm like uh does this stuff really work and yeah yeah it, you know and and um and he's like so he says you know an olympic boxer cannot knock out another boxer with one punch Mm -hmm. And you're like, well, I've seen a lot of knockouts. And he said, yeah, I just said one punch. There's a couple of reasons why. The Olympic boxers have bigger gloves than mm -hmm. pros and MMA. Mm -hmm. And then and then they make them wear headgear. So they can't hit directly that 75 Gs that we just talked about. Mm -hmm. You just can't reach it with that stuff. So okay. how do you knock them out? One, two, get the brain spinning. You get oh, the brain spinning. The, the, the layers of the brain spin at different rates. The axions break knocks them out and there that's when he told me that that's when i went oh that that's what mips is trying to do they're trying so, to slow down that that rotation so like hit them on the top of the head hit them in the jaw on the other side and then it's just gonna twist the head around and lights out shake that's it huh yeah yeah so that's when i started really paying attention to the rotational stuff and said all right so and and he had the initial idea of well, what if we put these these gel things? And he put it in Liette's helmets first. Mm -hmm. um, Liette has those turbine three hundred and sixty pieces. Yeah, um, I have to take a look at those. I'm not I'm not familiar. Is this similar though? Similar idea. Similar idea. And yeah. and and he, you know, we were started talking. He said, and we can even make a more efficient structure. Uh huh. And so, and now, it, actually, last year, um, he worked with Fly. Uh, mm -hmm. on their motorsport side and they've got another structure. So it's, it's, it's material combination. Cause he, he actually worked at, originally with, um, with D three O. And mm -hmm. so he's got that kind of materials background. Mm -hmm. Now this is a little bit different formulation, but in the same vein. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it hardens more as the bigger the impact. Cause you, that, you know, you want that small impact to take the little stuff, but you do have to take big hits. So you got to harden it up. 
So your uh, LDL does that? It, it stiffens yeah. as it gets yeah. impacted? Yeah. Oh, I didn't as know it, that. As, yeah, as it needs to, yeah. So those of you that can't see it, it kind of looks like the top of a Lego where it's like the little round part and it has a, a hole in the middle of it. So like, you know how the cheap Legos didn't, or the, some of the, the weird shaped ones, they have like holes in the top of the little pegs that snap together. That's ah, kind of what the LDL looks like. This? There I am. Yeah, there you go. So those of you guys that are watching, he's holding some in, in his hand. But basically, they're like, they're not very big. They're only what? About uh, maybe not even a quarter of an inch tall. Yeah. Yeah. Three Something millimeter, like four millimeter. Yeah. Yeah. And so the they're, idea is they're gooey. That, yeah. And so then those are like spaced all over the inside of the helmet. And now that's giving you like a little bit more of an impact zone where your head's smushing against it, but then it can twist as well. Correct. And so is there like, I'm sure you probably have a number, maybe not like, like how much does that reduce just having that little bit of material? 48 there? times. Oh, really? Wait, that, that, no, no, that's, that's, <laughs> that's that, uh, Trek stuff. Uh -huh. <laughs> so they came out and said 48 times. Yeah. Um, so between, um, got it all adds up the in molding that we did on motorcycle helmets reduced mm -hmm. the, the linear impacts by 20 to 25%. Uh -huh. Then we added the cone shapes that we haven't uh -huh. really talked about that added another five, 6%. So we're now we're getting up there. It's a, and it also depends on, on if we're talking a linear mm -hmm. or a oblique impact. Um, we see reductions in oblique impacts. So the rotation stuff, same stuff as MIPS mm -hmm. in the, 20% range. Wow. It's crazy to look at this. Like when you look at it on the inside of the helmet, somebody asked me this recently and they were like, how is that possibly doing anything? And I'm like, I don't know, dude, I'm not a freaking scientist or an engineer, but it obviously works. You guys wouldn't be, be like spending all your time figuring it out if it didn't. We, we actually spent a lot of time on it. Um, we continue to test. We test in like four different test labs around the world. Um, mm -hmm. And the reason people ask me why I do that, it'd be because test labs have biases. Uh -huh. I mean, they test specific ways and we get different results in one lab than another lab. So we're mm -hmm. constantly trying to make sure we're balancing and getting the best information. Like if we only did in our own lab, what would we do? We'd choose the best results. Oh, look, here's our 48 right. times. Better, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Right. If you like that, make sure you check out the full episode. And hey, do me a favor. Before you take off, hit the like and subscribe. Be sure to check out our show sponsors, Cali Protectives, and click on the link and show more to use the discount code and save 15%.